Welcome friends to another r slash nuclear revenge video. Today we've got a couple of crazy revenge stories, but first, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below so you never miss any of my daily videos. That said, our first story of the day is I stole his movie tickets. My boyfriend and I lived together, but to be honest, it was for economical reasons, not because we decided that we wanted to be closer to each other or that we were in love or any of those romantic reasons. It was purely for the financial benefits. We both met in our final year of college. He wanted to live in the city and I wanted to live in the city too. My boyfriend loves the noise and the rush in the city. He wanted to meet new people and experience them. That was the kind of life he wanted for himself. I didn't care for the noise in the city. If it were left to me, I would choose to live in the suburbs over life in the city, but if I wanted a career for myself, I had to stay in the city. I'm a writer and the chances of getting noticed by a decent publisher were higher if I lived in the city. So when I was leaving college, I knew I had to move to the city. My boyfriend and I have been together for a long time, dating on and off because we were both young people who were too lazy about commitment. We never expressly talked about having a relationship where we could see other people, but we did see other people. I knew he would go on dates with other girls, and he knew about being with other guys too, but we both hardly cared. Sometimes he starts seeing a new girl and he goes off for weeks. Well, to be honest, that's happened to me too. I've met guys who have captured my heart for, say, weeks, but my boyfriend and I would always gravitate towards each other at the end of the day. Just before graduation, we talked about life after graduation and what we would do with our lives after college. My boyfriend said that he wanted to move to the city to enjoy the noise and hustle and bustle and I wanted to do the same so I can get noticed as a writer, after which I would leave to a less noisy place where I can write and avoid people. The city we wanted to live in was the same, so we decided to live together. It made sense to do that. Living in the city was expensive. Rent and all, we would save a lot of money if we lived together. We had student loans on our necks that we were determined to pay off soon anyway, so we wanted to do anything to cut costs. My boyfriend moved in before me. We found the apartment together and went to inspect it together, but couldn't move in at the same time because I had to travel to see my parents. I stayed at my parents' house for a week and flew back to the city to officially move in with my boyfriend. When I moved in, he said he wanted to talk, but at the time he was very busy settling into his new job so we barely saw each other for the first week. He returned very late from work, and I would usually be asleep by that time. I'd do my best work very early in the morning, so I wake up to write very early, and I hated to be distracted when I'm writing. By then, my boyfriend would be going off to work, so we barely had time to talk until the weekend. That weekend, he took me out to dinner and revealed that he wanted to change the dynamics of our relationship. He said we were full adults now, and he would prefer if we stayed committed to each other and not see other people anymore, as we did in college. I agreed, but only reluctantly. I didn't think my boyfriend and I were in love enough to be so committed to each other. I definitely cared deeply for him and him for me, but I don't think we were people who could be in a committed, monogamous relationship, especially with each other, and I didn't trust him to keep up with it. It was a tough first year we had adjusting to living together and managing our finances. He worked two jobs and both were demanding. He also interned twice a week at a big advertising agency. We hardly saw each other during the week, and even on weekends he got so tired that we hardly had time to talk much or hang out together. Nearly a year after we moved in together, he got a full-time job at the big advertising agency. We were both excited and we went out to celebrate. It was good news because the new position meant good pay, and good pay meant better food in the fridge. Our arrangement worked very well for me. I did some freelance writing here and there while still working on my book. Since I was home most of the time, I had dinner ready when he returned from work, and on weekends we did our grocery shopping together. While I chipped in for rent, my boyfriend took care of food, groceries, and home supplies since he earned a lot more than I did. That way I had more money to save and pay for my student loan. I was happy and so was my boyfriend. He was comfortable with what he had going on. Some months after he started at his new job, my boyfriend got a little happier than usual. I noticed he started paying more attention to how he looked. He bought new perfumes and got a new haircut. I suspected that someone else was in the picture and I was correct. Someone was in the picture. My boyfriend had his coworker and new friend at work come over for dinner one night, 
and while I was getting dessert ready, I heard them talking about a lady at work. Her voice is so heavenly, it's like when she starts speaking, I can hardly do anything but listen. They both laughed. She has a great voice indeed. I suggested to her to consider voice acting when I first met her. Isn't she too nerdy for that? My boyfriend asked. She doesn't have a nerdy voice, I'll tell you that. They laughed again. They stopped talking when I walked into the living room with dessert. When his friend left, I told him I heard a bit of their convo and asked who they were talking about. He was reluctant to tell me who she was, but he eventually spilled. She's an intern at work. She just finished college, so she interns at the agency. He liked her. I just knew it. I say, well, do you like her? He says, nope. I say, are you sure about that? I've asked my boyfriend if he likes a girl in the past, and he said yes. We were still in college at the time, and the girl was a freshman in his department. We were out with friends when he saw her and walked up to her to say hello. They spoke for a while before he returned, and I watched how he spoke to her. I knew he liked her, and I asked him if he did later that evening when we returned to my room, and he admitted having feelings for her. I wasn't mad or anything. My boyfriend and I were not exclusive, as I mentioned before. But I did feel a little bit of jealousy. I asked if he wanted to do anything about it because he was quite reluctant to provide an answer. I noticed at the time that my boyfriend was usually reluctant to admit that he wanted to or was seeing anyone else. And I didn't understand why. He was trying to pretend we were exclusive. He knew that I occasionally went out with other guys anyway. Again, he lied about not liking the intern when it was quite obvious that he did like her. I said, if you want to go out with her... I don't want to, he interrupted me quickly. I have only eyes for you. I did not believe that. I didn't get to meet this lady until months later when I organized a birthday party for him. His birthday was coming up and I reached out to his friend from work so we could plan a surprise birthday party for him. His friend helped me invite the co-workers he talked to and we planned a little party in our apartment. His sister came visiting so while he was at work, we got the apartment ready for the party. We went out for the evening while the guests arrived at our apartment. His sister texted me when all the guests had arrived and I made up something about being cold and suggested we go back home. He agreed. My boyfriend was super excited about the party. He and his sister were in the foster care system as children, so they very rarely had birthday parties organized for them. I was happy about his excitement too. He deserved to be happy and had been a great boyfriend too, so I wanted to reward him and make him happy. Just as the party was on, I noticed him talking to a blonde girl. She was drop dead gorgeous and I noticed how he paid so much attention to her. He was clearly into her. I didn't think she was the girl I heard him talking about with his co-worker until I moved closer to them and he introduced us. Her voice gave her out. She certainly had a heavenly voice and was quite the nerd too. All through the party he would randomly walk up to her and they would talk and laugh. I was uncomfortable and certain that he liked her. Some days after the party, I walked into our bedroom and caught my boyfriend putting something away. What are those? I asked, walking towards him. He quickly hid something in between the pages of a book and said, nothing. He met me halfway in the room and hugged me. How smart, I thought. He was hiding something and I made a mental note to find out what it was later. That evening, he went out with his friends to watch a game and I went into the room and searched for the book he had hidden something in. My suspicion grew when I couldn't find the book. What was he hiding? I went to his side of the closet and found the book. Right in the middle of the books were two movie tickets and a brown envelope. The movie was showing the next evening. At first, I thought the movie tickets were for us. But he knew I didn't like movies. I'm a book person. I'd rather read a book than watch a movie. So it certainly was not for me. He had made me go with him to the cinema several times because he loves watching movies, but I always fell asleep in the cinema. One day he got mad and swore to never go to the movies with me. I didn't care. Watching movies is simply an interest he has that I don't. Sitting through a movie was a chore for me anyway, and I'd rather not. Ever since then, he never asked me to watch a movie with him. If he wasn't going with me, then it had to be a girl. I knew he didn't get tickets to go see a movie with one of the boys. Plus, he was hiding the tickets. That had to mean something. I took the tickets, hid them in the pockets of my jean trousers, and carefully hung them in my closet. Then I found two cards lying around, cut them into the sizes of those tickets, and put them in the brown envelope where I'd seen the tickets. That night, my boyfriend and I were talking when his phone rang and he stood to receive the call. 
work, he whispered to me and stepped out onto the balcony. I could see him from the living room and it certainly was not a call from work. He was smiling and flirting with whoever he was talking to. It had to be the intern from work. I was sure of it, but I didn't care. I'd ruined their plans for the next night already. I wasn't surprised when the next day, he lied about needing to go into the office to handle some leftover work from the week before. I have to get it done before Monday, he said, wearing a big denim jacket. I saw that he had folded the brown envelope in his jacket pocket, and I smiled to myself. Immediately he left. I called an old friend and told her I've got two tickets to a movie. They say, since when do you enjoy going to the movies? I say, since today. Are you down? They say, sure. I hurriedly got dressed. She came over to the apartment, and we drove to the cinema. Just as we were driving in, I saw my boyfriend's car drive out of the mall. I was pleased. I had ruined his plans for the evening. We went to the cinema and had fun. I didn't like movies, but interestingly, I enjoyed the movie and had a good time at the cinema. When I returned home, my boyfriend was asleep on the couch, but he woke up as soon as he heard me. How did work go? I asked, smiling. I know what you did. I told him I didn't know what he was talking about and walked away. He followed me into the bedroom. I said, it was you who said you wanted to be exclusive. He sighed and said, I'm sorry, I promise it wasn't a date. She knows about you. She met you at my birthday party. I say, oh, it's the girl with the heavenly voice, right? He says, I'm sorry, I slipped. I'm really sorry. I didn't speak to him at all through that weekend and the next week. I was pissed that he would ask us to be exclusive and still sneak around behind my back. The most annoying thing was that he lied to me. He didn't have to do that. We could have continued with our relationship dynamics. We ended up talking about it. I suggested we go back to how our relationship used to be, but he declined. He wanted an exclusive relationship and promised to keep that this time. I agreed to his terms, but not until he told me what happened on his would-have-been date. Apparently, when he got to the mall, he pulled out the brown envelope and saw what I had done. He told her he had to return home, and she was pissed and wouldn't even speak to him again. My question is, unless this is like a movie debut and like the theater is full, why not just like save face and walk in there and buy another couple tickets? Probably because they knew they'd been caught. But considering this guy has already had a history of sleeping around with other people and tried to go already behind OP's back once and couldn't even hardly fess up to it until it was totally exposed, do you think OP's making a major mistake giving them another chance? I'd like to know what you guys think down in the comments below. That said, our final story of the day is I ruined my sister's sleepover. My twin sister and I are in the same friendship circle and have a great relationship now. But things weren't always this way. We fought a lot growing up and were practically enemies. She's all mature, calm and collected now, but she used to be very annoying and bratty. She antagonized me all the time and somehow deluded herself into thinking she was older than me. She managed to fool everyone at school too. My sister genuinely believed she was my older sister. And yeah, she's older, but only by a few minutes. I was a scrawny little boy as a teenager, but my sister grew at a faster rate. She was taller, pretty, and was the typical beautiful popular girl in high school movies. She was one of the most popular in school too, and one of her best friends was the most popular girl in school. Her mom was a celebrity at the time, a famous TV show actress. My sister was obsessed with being and staying the cool girl in school that she avoided me who was at the time a geek who spent all of his time in the library and science club. She didn't deny that I was her brother, but she hated people knowing we were twins. She would often tell everyone that I was her baby brother. Boy, that pissed me off. Also, she was our parents' favorite. Our parents deny it, but they loved her more, especially my dad. She was and still is his favorite child. Before I ruined her all-girl sleepover, she did some things that pissed me off, and ruining her sleepover was how I got my revenge. My dad had strict rules about us playing certain video games in the house, but my new friends from the swim team I had just joined in school came over and wanted to play. I was grateful enough to have those guys even come over to my house. They were the cool kids and I wanted more than anything to stay friends with them, so I welcomed playing those video games. My sister walked in on us playing and having fun, but I didn't think she would rat me out to our parents. Well, she did. 
One day, my parents were on the balcony talking when my sister walked past them in a short skirt. Where do you think you're going dressed like that? My mom queried. My sister in her usual mannerism rolled her eyes and frowned. Mom, it's just a skirt. It's a skirt that you won't be wearing out of this house. My mom turned to my dad. Tell her. My dad sighed and said, Honey, that skirt is too short. You know the rules. My sister frowned and turned to go back into the house. But before that, she told my dad that I'd played violent video games in the house and disobeyed the rules. Yes, she did accompany the rules with air quotes. There was no reason for her to do that. She knew how my dad felt about such video games. But she had a habit of trying to get me into trouble with our parents whenever she was in trouble. My dad was furious and disappointed in me. He took things like that seriously and he would never tolerate violent video games. He just never understood that sometimes it was just a game and nothing more. As a psychologist, he believed violent video games subconsciously encouraged boys to be violent. My dad grounded me for two days, and while I was grounded, one of the guys from the swim team had a party. I couldn't attend, so naturally I fell off their good graces and went back to not having cool friends. Maybe now I wouldn't be concerned with friends like those, but as a teenager, that hurt me, and I blamed my dad and sister for blowing up my chances. My sister's friend, the one whose mom was an actress, planned a sleepover for their clique, and my sister could not shut up about it. She went on and on about how it was going to be perfect and how they were going to have a lot of fun. I was jealous of the fact that she regularly had a lot of fun and enjoyed a very healthy social life. All through that week, she looked forward to hanging out with her friends at their big house that weekend. Unfortunately for the girls, their friend's mom had already planned a party for the cast of a TV show she started at the time. The girls were livid and their mood dampened. My sister moped around the house looking all sad and frustrated. My mom then came up with a bright idea. She told my sister that the girls could have their sleepover at our house. My sister was reluctant to ask her friends at first. While our house was not particularly small, it was certainly not anywhere close to the size of my sister's friend's house. I was sure that the girls would prefer to hang out at the other girl's big house than at ours. I laughed and said there was no way the girls would choose to have their dream sleepover at our house. Shut up, my sister yelled at me and threw some of the cereal from her cereal bowl at me. I said, hey, stop it, mom. My mom rolled her eyes. Come on, don't throw food at your brother, she said weakly. My sister ran upstairs to break the news that our mom had offered them a spot for their sleepover in our house to her friends. I continued my laughter. Seriously, shut up, my mom shouted at me. I stopped laughing and shrugged. Mom, you know there's no way that they'll come here for their grand sleepover, right? She says we don't know that, plus their friends bailed on them. They don't have any other option. Beggars can't be choosers. Yo, I called out to my sister from the dining table. Mom said your friends are beggars. My mom threw her food at me too. Hey, I yelled, wiping soggy flakes from my face. Shut up, sore loser, my sister screamed from the top of the stairs. She hurried down excitedly. My friends agreed, we're gonna have our sleepover here, she squealed. She hugged my mom and did a little dance while my mom gave me the I told you so face. My parents were leaving for a wedding in a different state the next day, so they made us a promise to behave ourselves properly while they were away and left. As I watched my sister arrange her room for the sleepover, a revenge plan came to my mind. I almost fell over in laughter when I thought of it. I honestly didn't set out to carry out revenge on my sister for her bratty attitude and for telling on me and making my parents so mad at me, but since I was bored to death and had nothing planned for the whole day, all thanks to her, I thought that I might just as well have fun ruining her girl's night. I felt justified about my plans since she was one of the major reasons I had nothing to do that day. Just as the first friend arrived, I lied to my sister that I was leaving for a party. I was even all dramatic and got dressed. She was happy to know that she and her friends would have the whole house to themselves for most of the night. Great, now I get to host my friends properly without you getting in the way, she said, twirling her hair around her finger and rolling her eyes at me. I just smiled and left her to answer the door. When she and her friend were in her room, I tiptoed to my room and quietly shut the door behind me. From my room, I heard her friends come in one by one and I heard how they all got excited when the queen of their clique came in. The one whose mom was an actress was the queen, 
They all fell over themselves to please her and in return, she allows them a glimpse into her life. For instance, she's allowed the girls to play dress up in their mother's guac in closet. First they played music, danced and laughed in the living room. Then later in the night, they all went into my sister's bedroom. It was my time to carry out my plan of disrupting her precious sleepover. I went out of the house through my room's window and climbed up a short ladder to her room's window. The ladder was short, so I could make sounds that would infiltrate her room, but it wasn't long enough that any of them could see me without looking down. I started to make eerie sounds. The girls were talking and laughing so they could barely hear my eerie sounds. Some seconds into my consistent eerie noise making, I heard one of the girls ask, Can you guys hear that? I stopped. Hear what? I heard my sister ask. The girls all went silent so they could hear what the girl heard. I don't hear anything, one of the girls said. Yeah, me neither, my sister corroborated. I'm sure I heard something, the first girl insisted. I almost started laughing. I wanted to scare them, but now they were arguing. Two of the girls said they heard me. The first girl insisted that she heard something, and my sister, who was probably irritated that the girl was ruining their night together, kept reiterating that there was no noise. Well, I heard something. Maybe someone's trying to prank us by making funny noises. The only one who could do that would be my brother, and he's not even home, my sister replied. Why do you girls never listen to me, the girl asked. She sounded like she was in tears. She went on to say that if the actress's daughter had said she heard something, everyone would listen to her. Why are you being such a witch? Stop making this about you. Gosh. We did not hear the noise, the actress's daughter yelled. Don't call me a witch. You're the self-centered one. We spent weeks planning for this night, and you didn't even take this seriously enough to check with your mom. As I descended from the ladder, I heard my sister trying to calm the girls down and defuse the situation. I waited down the ladder until they were done arguing. This took a while. When it looked like it was all good, I climbed up the ladder and made my eerie sound again. I'm talented at making weird sounds. I could sound like animals and mimic many other sounds, so my eerie noise sounded very real. This time all the girls heard. What is that? One of the girls asked. She was afraid. I heard that too, another girl said. Call for help. Don't be dramatic, my sister chided. I made the sound again. My sister called out my name twice. I know it's you, I swear to God, I'm going to call dad. Who is that? One of the girls asked her. My brother. I'm sure he's the one who's been making that funny noise. I thought you said he was out attending a party. She says that's what I thought. He probably returned early to disrupt my night. Why would he do that? One of the girls asked. I was sure it was the girl who heard me the first time because it sounded like she was crying again. My sister says, I don't know, he's weird. I couldn't help laughing so I chuckled softly and climbed down the ladder. I suggest we move to the living room. Seems like there's a ghost making weird noises in your room, one of the girls suggested. The other girls agree. I quietly climbed back into my room from the window. In my room, I hear the girls moving downstairs. They were already talking and laughing again. I grinned. I had another plan mapped out and I could not wait to carry it out. When the girls were in my sister's room trying to get stuff out, I sneaked out into the kitchen so it looked like I was just coming in. Hey, was that you making weird noises at my bedroom's window? My sister asked immediately after she saw me. No, I don't know what you're talking about, I said with a straight face. And quite frankly, I'm not interested. I just returned from an actual adult party that I enjoyed and I'm not interested in discussing girls playing around in their underwear. My sister gave me a sharp look and shook her head. You better not try to ruin this for me. Our parents had a carton of beer in the fridge, and I took a bottle out and took a sip. Maybe you girls need a little alcohol to chill out. She looked at me skeptically, snatched the bottle from my hands, and walked away. I hoped that she would share the drinks with her friends. Turns out she did, because when I came down to the kitchen to drink water, the living room smelled of alcohol. She had opened the other bottles in the fridge and shared them with her friends. I was quite dedicated to my revenge missing that I set an alarm just in case I dozed off. It was my only chance to get back at my sister and I was not about to ruin the fun for myself. Not quite long after, the girls' voices become more hushed. I fell asleep but was soon awoken by my alarm. I opened my drawer and picked out my permanent marker. I was happy. It was time to get to business. I snuck into the living room where the girls were sleeping and drew straight lines on their faces with my marker. 
They were all very tired and had drunk alcohol, so they turned and twisted but didn't notice that someone had come in or felt the marker on their faces. I drew on four of the girls, including my sister, and left the actress's daughter's face bare, so everyone would think she did it. I snuck back to my room and went to sleep. The next morning, all the girls were mad at the girl whose face I left bare. She's always been a total witch, I heard one of the girls exclaim. My sister knew it was me, so she tried to explain to the girls that I did it, but they weren't listening to her. They kept fighting and bringing up old wrongs. I was in my room all the while, enjoying their arguments. I dared not leave my room though. My sister would have had the girls beat me up. My sister did not forgive me for what I did for a long time. The funny thing is about this story is the friends all had their own narrative that they're completely agreed upon, committed to, so like there's no incentive from the sister to reveal the truth and drag OP into it so OP kind of just got away with it. That said, I feel like OP got very lucky because I feel like this could have gone wrong. They slip on the ladder, they actually just go out and investigate, they call the cops, or one of them isn't as tipsy, didn't drink, they wake up, they see everything, you know? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy revenge story, click on that left video. Or if you missed my latest video, check out the one on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.